Hey everyone, happy Monday and happy Monday motivation. Welcome to the podcast, No More Excuses, where we're kicking off the year with a bang and setting you up for your crushing goals and living like the badass you were meant to be, right? We're all badass. We just sometimes, we don't know where that is. We get it's inside us and we just need something or someone to kick us in the gear, nudge us a little and, and find it, right? I'm Sandy, the Badass Business Coach, yes, and I'm here to help you stay focused and motivated to achieve your goals and, like I said, live like the badass you're meant to be. So what do you want to do this year? How can you do it this year? Well, the last couple of weeks, I've started giving out three tips. Yes, a lot of times they're business tips, but there are ways to help you grow personally and professionally. And I've got another this week and one more week to finish out the month of January to really help you get going and just make this the biggest, most badass year yet, right? So the last couple of weeks were about creating your vision, setting up your goals and the plan, creating the plan, right? Oh, and last week, habits prioritization, and embracing the chaos because business ownership or leading a team or maybe you've got the job of your dreams, it's going to be a lot of work, but it doesn't have to suck. You just have to dig in and sometimes embrace the chaos and let it roll around you. But keeping your eyes on the prize, keeping your eyes on the goal of whatever you're here for, right? So if you haven't listened to, to the other two podcasts, please do, 391 and 392, but you can go back and listen to it. Grab your notepad and get ready, or if you're watching on my YouTube channel, thank you. Please subscribe and share that as well, but also thank you for being here. Thank you for investing in you and your success. So today, I'm going to dig into your ass a little bit. All right, today's tips are focused on productivity. Oh my gosh. There's so many ways we can be more productive, right? And a lot of times people think multitasking is the way to go. Well, multitasking is not a superpower. It should be eliminated from everyone's vocabulary. I multitask sometimes. And guess what? That means I'm half-assing. If I'm doing three things at once, like on a Zoom, answering an email or checking my phone or writing a note, guess what? I'm putting in, was that 30, maybe 25? If I'm doing four things, I'm 25%ing it. Half-assing everything you're doing. You're not fully intentional and fully focused on what you're doing. So stop trying to fucking multitask. All right, there we go. I said it. So today we've had tips one through six already. Today, tip number seven, eliminate the distractions. And I don't know if you can hear that, but that's my dumbass cat right there, right? Love her to death, but she's, why is she meowing right now? I don't know. I, so I can't really eliminate that distraction because if I put her out in the other room, she'll meow louder. So there you go. <laughs> but, but setting yourself up for success, eliminating the distractions, uh, and um, eliminating whatever you can do to help yourself be more productive and less distracted, like the cat bothering me. But also looking at your environment, setting up your environment is huge for your success. And that means people and things, all right? Is someone in your space? Is, is something in your space like a cat? But also, you know, di distractions are dream killers. They're productivity's worst nightmare. You think you can juggle a mi million things, like I said, multitasking? No. You know, you're not going to hit your targets by doing that. Let's get real. Let's cut the shit. Let's shut down the noise and get laser focused on what we want to do. When you eliminate the distractions, you're not just tidying up your workspace and making sure your everything is your piles are in order and you have a space for everything. It's mentally clearing out the clutter. It, that's sabotaging your success. It's going full beast mode on your goals and have this, I'm here to conquer, conquer this and kick ass and be badass type of mentality. You know, and, and you don't have it every day. I don't have it every day, but here's some things to look at to make sure you, you can eliminate as many distractions as possible. 
you know, like I mentioned, dedicated workspace, clean workspace. Mine right now, hot mess, right? Because we moved and a couple months ago had some construction. I still don't have the cabinets and, and shit I want. And I don't always use this workspace. So it becomes a dumping ground. And that is a huge distraction. Every time I come in here, especially to record this, I've got to move shit. It's not set up. I can't easily just do something. So do you have a dedicated workspace, especially with people working from home now? Hopefully by now you do. But, you know, we moved from Indiana where I had a thousand square feet just for an office to a thousand square feet to live in difference, right? So how can you create a space, carve out a space that's just for you? Do you need a cabinet? Do you need boxes to put some things in? What do you need to help you have a great space to work, right? And do you have people or animals in, in your workspace that are bugging you? Sometimes, like I said, if we're working from home, sometimes the kids are home. Sometimes the dog wants to be let or the cat wants your attention. You know, sometimes people knock at your door and you're like, um, yeah, I mean, we had a plumber in and out one day and I even put a note on the door that said, do not disturb me. And he was yelling up the stairs to me. I'm like, dude, seriously, <laughs> you know, trying to eliminate those expectations, but you can do that even more by, as I get into my other two tips, expectations and boundaries. But figure out what you need. How can you set your space up for your success? Yes, organization is huge. Making those to-do lists and eliminating the distractions by shutting off notifications while you're recording. Um, I've had many times my email. I know you've if you've listened to me for a while, I'm positive my email has dinged. I haven't checked it while I've been recording, but I'm sure it's dinged while we've been recording. Right. So shutting off your, your notifications, putting notes on doors. If you have contractors or people or something, some for some reason, people coming in and out and just doing your best to carve out the time, block the time for you. Right. Um, identify those key times to check messages. You know, unless your role is to answer the phone, answer emails like your tech support or something, shut them off shut them off while you're working or, and I have, I had one client that was like, you know, nine o'clock noon, like right after lunch, maybe it was one o'clock. And then later in the afternoon, right before work, before work ended, and then set that up for the next day with what didn't get done. And that was great. If you can do that, because other times you're just like, watching that little notification, or if your phone buzzes, you pick it up, you're immediately looking. Oh, and those damn Apple watches, right? You're always looking, looking, looking. I've even asked people, am I disrupting you? <laughs> you know what they're look, looking at their watch? That's rude. All right, tip number eight, set clear expectations. This is another way to remove uh, distractions and be more productive. Regardless of you're working from home or not, you have an office, maybe you have a dedicated office, maybe you're working at a co-working space, maybe you're out in a bunch of cubicle hell. We all have times when we allow the distractions, people will just walk up, call you 10 times and then start texting you because you're not answering. And guess what? When you check, finally answer the phone, they're not in jail at the hospital. They just wanted to bullshit or wonder why you didn't pick up, right? We all have had that friend. But here's the deal. Setting clear expectations isn't just about being bossy, being bitchy, being the core. It's the cornerstone of getting shit done right. It's like giving someone a roadmap to the treasure chest and just saying, hey, matey, it's somewhere out there, right? You just, you need to be specific and direct. And I'm talking about not just saying, hey, get out of my office. I'm fucking working, right? I'm talking about whether you're working on a project. Um, whether you're working on a project, whether you're working on a project with a team or you're delegating something to someone, that's where you're giving them all the details you can. Talk to them about format, um, style, and deadlines. When is this due? And if we know that, somebody, that somebody's always late, okay, clear expectations on if you're meeting someone, if you know they're one of those always late people, which I've discussed that. I really can't stand that. Don't just say it. it's a bad habit. Fix that habit. But if you know someone needs extra time or they're going to potentially be late, 
cut it short, right? Give it, give them a, a one less day, but being super clear about this, because I had a, I did a talk one time in, at a conference and this woman kept saying, well, I can't tell my boss. No, yes, you can. She refused. I said, fine, don't tell him. No, ask him for clearer expectations. If you, if he just dumped five or 10 projects on your, on your desk, ask him to be clear because you can't just dump them. So if this is, if you do this, don't do this in the, with those projects, be clear on the expectations. When did they do? Because how can, back to tip number five, how can you ruthlessly prioritize if you don't know which project is more important? Which one has the hierarchy, right? Again, so set clear expectations. Whether it's, you know, you're, like I said, you're, you're the one giving the project, you're working on a project and you need dedicated quiet time, or you are working with the team and everyone know, needs to know what they have and what they have and have to do. And by when clear expectations, use your words, but also put it in writing because somebody will say, that's not what I heard. Guarantee it. Right. Tip number nine, create strong, healthy boundaries. Oh my God, boundaries. I had a client years ago and actually one recently, I forgot about this, where he works from home. And it was like almost the same person. That's why I said years ago, but it was, they're almost identical. They both work from home. They're both of them have little kids and a wife that takes care of the kids, which is hands down a harder job. However, they bug him constantly. They think just because he's working from home, his office is in the garage, they converted the garage to an office that he can be bothered at any time. And this was previous client and current client. No, set the boundaries up to where I am working. I, you know, it's sort of like expectations, but you're letting them know, here are the boundaries. I'm working from this time to this time. I will come into the house for lunch or I will come to you there because they can't just barge in when he's on the phone or on a Zoom call or, um, I don't know, working hard on a project because one is in IT and honestly, the other one was an electrician um, and he ran his clients or his uh, teams and, and staff from his home, which is fine because then he had to go out to the field. So, you know, hey, set up those boundaries. And another client who was the HVAC. It's interesting. These are all men. Um, he would get bombarded every time he walked into the door uh, with questions. I have this, I have this, can I have a second, I have this. And he's like, I just need to have some solid time. So what we came up with, putting a whiteboard outside of his door, right? And then it, he knew, his staff knew if his door was closed, if it was open, fair game. If it was closed, that meant you need to write your name on the whiteboard. And if you can, if it's not a private matter, you put down what you want to discuss so he can then, whether it's get the information you need or just be mentally prepared for when it was your turn for him to talk with. And that changed his stress level tremendously. And it also just changed the dynamic of the team and their relationship because they didn't feel like they were bugging him and he wasn't like, okay. And try to fake it, try to have the poker face because you know you can't, right? You know, try to create schedules if you're working from home or in the same area. So you're not having multiple, you know, virtual calls at the same time. But those boundaries are so important, right? Those boundaries are just what it's going to take. And all this is, you know, to help you with productivity, it's creating solid, healthy boundaries, developing and you know, just identifying those clear expectations and eliminating distractions. They'll all help eliminate distractions. And guess what? More productive, more efficient, more money, right? Or maybe you have all the money you need. You just want more playtime, more time with the family, more time to come out of the garage and, and be with the family and spend time with the family, right? Less time being stressed and annoyed. So bonus tip number one, stop making excuses when you allow someone or something in, inside those boundaries 
or to fuck up your expectations or not listen because you didn't write it down as well. And, and be a distraction. Stop making excuses that they disrupted your day because you allowed it. Think about that one. And bonus tip, tip number two, take action, right? None of these tips will mean a damn thing unless you take action. So which one are you going to work on? Like I said, they all sort of play into each other, but pick one. If you're bad about telling people no or not right now, if you're bad about really explaining p- things to people about what needs to be done and by when, if you're frustrated with your team and they never get something done on time, how can you go back and talk to them? How can you be more clear? Write it down with your expectations. All right. So if you need all these tips, want all these tips, as a reminder, go to my website, badassbusiness.coach, click on the email link that it says top 10 tips, and I will send you a PDF of all of them with even more tips and tricks and stories like that, ways I've helped people work through their challenges of not making enough money, not reaching their goals because they've allowed distractions, because they weren't clear on their expectations and they were disappointed in others and themselves and allowed people to just walk in and bug them when they're in the middle of things. Yes, it's so easy to to pick up your phone and look at it while you're doing something else or I, I won't check my email on my computer, but you grab your phone. Right. So thinking about that, how are you going to eliminate distractions by having clearer expectations and stronger boundaries? That's it for today. And the biggest thing, don't make excuses when someone you allow someone else to screw up your day. All right. Have a great week. I look forward to hearing from you. Cheers.